The Let's Talk series is a 30 minute video discussion between myself, Dr. Becca, Dr. Amanda, and a local practitioner who understands pelvic health on topics pertaining to women's health and wellness. This series was created to help women navigate their pelvic health wherever they are on the path of womanhood, to advocate, navigate, and collaborate together with a holistic team of allies. Pelvic health healing is multidimensional and the best outcomes occur, occur with a team-based approach. We invite you to tune into our monthly series to learn more about your pelvic health and engage with our community partners. So today's speaker, welcome to Sarah Cole. Um, Sarah Cole is a uh, registered nurse, but she just graduated as a nurse practitioner. Yay. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, so today's topic, um, we are going to be discussing um, women's sexual and physical wellness um, with PRP, and that is platelet-rich plasma, which Sarah will go into um, more in detail as we continue to talk. But Sarah is, she's a native of South Jersey. Um, she's been married almost seven years to her husband, Bobby, and has two babies at home, Luke and Grace. She's been a registered nurse for over 12 years, spending eight of those years in the ICU, caring for the critically ill. Over the past four years, Sarah has passionately worked as the aesthetic nurse specialist at Davis Cosmetic Plastic Surgery, where she focuses on women's mind, body, aesthetic, and sexual health and wellness. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Thank you for Hey, thank you. Yeah, so you want to introduce yourself and the topic a little bit more to our viewers? Sure. So like these ladies presented, my name is Sarah. Um, I've been a nurse for a while now. And, you know, just like most of us women, I think at some point we start sort of reevaluating what we're doing with our careers and are we heading in the direction that we feel very passionate about. And after spending about eight and a half years in the ICU, I started feeling a little confused, not feeling as passionate about my profession as I had previously. So I started venturing into dermatology a little bit. I reached out to the dermatologist at Cooper, um, one of the amazing women that used to work over there. And I decided to start shadowing her. And I spent quite a bit of time sort of following her around the office and just all of a sudden realizing, oh my gosh, I love cosmetic dermatology. So I started shadowing, watching her do a lot of her cosmetic procedures in the office, absolutely fell in love with it started knocking on every plastic surgeon's door and uh, every medical spa's door and started asking for some shadowing opportunities. Ended up um, sort of landing my first mini job, helping out one of the physicians, just doing you know Botox and, and drawing up certain things for her, observing filler procedures. And it, it sort of turned into a little job and that's how I got trained. And after spending a couple of months with her, I ended up switching jobs, went over uh, with Dr. Davis and Cherry Hill. Uh, he's a board certified plastic surgeon, 30 plus years of experience. And he really took me under his wing, learned a tremendous amount from that man. He's absolutely incredible. Um, and then just sort of, you know, established my own little role in the office, really got all of my patients myself. And I'm very lucky. I've been doing it for about four years. And, and I would say walking into the office, I'm fully booked. It's really all the same patients that I sort of started out with. So I've really been growing my patient base. And I feel like I have friends when those patients are walking in the door and, and they really trust what I have to say to them. And I do not offer anything to my patients unless I completely 110% believe in the product or the procedure or it's backed by science and it's only going to provide, you know, exceptional, um, you know, results for that patient. So I really believe in what I do and I'm more about, yes, aesthetically treating the patient's outer beauty, but I think it's super important to also make sure that the patient internally is feeling just as wonderful as they are on the outside. So I've really been venturing a little bit more into holistic ways to make patients feel great about what is going on with them internally as a woman. And that's sort of how I began steering into the direction of sexual health and wellness, because I mean, about 98% of the female pop population is actually not even admitting to having uh, sexual health problems. So there's a huge need out there um, for women to have options to treat different 
issues um, holistically, but also, of course, with medications and, um, you know, psychotherapy, things of that nature. But the first step is really to talk to someone that you trust. And I feel as though a lot of my patients have began to establish that trust with me. And that's sort of why I decided to figure out what type of solutions are out there for my patients. Mm -hmm. I would say that's very similar to like our, our client population that, you know, you do become very friendly with people and they, they trust you because you are talking about such Mm -hmm. sensitive matters. And even if you started talking to them about like the wrinkle care, that hits such a deep note for people that it does so important that that's then like a, a turning point for you to be able to discuss sexual wellness. And like, we Mm -hmm have no problem talking about yeah. peeing and pooping and sex all day. It's normal to us. It's very <laughs> normal, but there is yeah. a personality For that sure. people come in and they say, we feel really comfortable with you. So I think it's just amazing that you've kind of steered in that direction and it's so needed because we, we were just talking about yesterday of the, the lack of estrogen for most of our population, whether it's postpartum or um, perimenopause or postmenopause, there's so much that's there and more women are feeling like you were saying, I want that holisticness, or I need a, a different way to do this. I don't want to just do estrogen or estrogen based creams. So I think what you're going to present today is a really important part of using your body's own systems and amazingness to be able to support. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I feel like definitely in, in the rehab world, like, you know, platelet rich plasma, Mm -hmm. there's been a lot of stuff out there as far as with like tendons and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, with the physical rehab, like recovery process. So, um, but it's so interesting, the other uses for it too, Mm -hmm. that dive into, um, yeah, like cosmetic, um, I was looking at it for my own face. help with like well I'll be over Sarah yes yeah I would bathe in it if I could (laughs) and we're just scratching the surface with what we can do with it right now so I'm excited to see where things turn in only a couple of years right and that's why we're super excited to have you on here to learn more about it as something Mm -hmm. that we can even talk to with our own clients that are you know, looking for that holistic approach of, of ways to kind of, um, you know, just improve their overall sexual wellness and, and health that way. So um, go ahead and give us a little bit of background about, you know, platelet rich plasma. What is it? Um, you know, how do you use it and that sort of thing? Yeah. So I actually, I, um, I use it for a lot of different things in the office. I'm going to keep everything strictly sexual health right now, but, you know, just talking to you, like I talk to any of my patients that come in, PRP essentially is if you're walking down the street and you trip and fall and you scratch your leg, well, what's going to repair that tissue? Well, first there's going to be a clotting cascade. So you're going to stop the bleeding by a clot being made. Then you're going to have your scab. And then all of a sudden your tissue is regenerated and you have new skin. So essentially that's all your PRP working to sort of repair your own body. Um, And that's really all it's doing. You're taking your own blood product, no chemicals involved, nothing weird. You know, you're just coming to the office. I'm drawing your blood, spinning it. Takes about 10 minutes to spin. That's the longest part of the entire procedure that day. Um, And then I'm drawing that blood, taking the, it's called platelet pour plasma off of the top. It's just like a little bit of a a transudate that's sort of floating on the top that's very poor in uh, plasma cells. You take that out, just a couple cc's, and then I sort of shake the product very lightly, get the platelet stimulated a little bit draw that out. It's, you know, super dense in platelet rich plasma. And then I just inject it into the areas that I want it to go to start creating an inflammatory process. And it does several things. One, it's repairing whatever the tissue needs to be repaired. So for example, if I'm placing it in the scalp, Patients sometimes are experiencing hair loss for various reasons. It could be anything, hormones, stress, you know, you name it. And if I'm placing it in the scalp, the PRP sort of looks around the scalp area and says, oh, okay, I'm, I'm by hair. So let me start repairing this hair follicle that's not doing well. Let me start creating a better blood supply by doing something called angiogenesis, giving the hair follicles, you know, the ability to thrive off of that good, fresh blood supply. And then it also has some stem cells in it. So it's going to create new hair follicles. 
Same thing if I put it, let's say in some soft tissue in, in the facial area, it's going to look around, oh, I'm in a cheek. Okay, let me start stimulating some collagen production. Let me start repairing the tissue, making it look a little bit more youthful, getting that skin to look a little bit brighter. If I'm doing you know, sexual wellness with PRP, there are certain areas um, in our lady parts that I inject it with, uh, one being around the, clit the clitoris and then also in the vaginal tissue. Uh, it's not going right into the vaginal tissue. It's sort of going around where the urethra, the urethra and the vagina are so that it's sort of repairing the tissue that is becoming a little bit more less elastic um, and needs a little bit more of like an umph we want to create more cells for the epi epithelial layer. We want the urethra to be a little bit tighter, help with stress incontinence. So we're regenerating new tissue, making the tissue healthier, and then we're also stimulating nerve production so that you have a better orgasm. So that's kind of the overview of what it's doing for sexual health. I can go into more detail, but I don't know where, if yeah. you have questions for me or if you want me to just go into yeah. it. Actually, I was going to say, we'll grab our, the pelvis that we have. And oh, okay. You got to tell us exactly. Um, here. This is Penny <laughs> pelvis. Penny has a name. So if you want to, so when we're talking about the clitoris, the clitoris is up here, kind of under yes. the pubic bone, and then kind of it hides under the, the labial skin. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have to lift up the labial skin. And sometimes people's clitorises are tiny, tiny, little pea tiny, <laughs> or sometimes they're a little bit larger. I've seen some that are almost like, little almond shaped. I'm sure you've seen different shapes and sizes. Yeah. So the cool thing is that everyone's anatomy is different, right? And you should embrace it, you know, be proud of it. Sometimes mm -hmm. patients feel a little self-conscious about how their clitoris looks. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit <laughs> ridiculous, you know, like, you know, our faces are different. So obviously other parts of our bodies are going to be different and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, patients, when they come in, their clitorises all look a little bit different and that's okay. I know where to find it. Right. Sometimes it's a little hard to find and that, that's a different um, issue that we can get into, but PRP still helps for it. Mm -hmm. So the way that the procedure works, if we're strictly talking about clitoral stimulation, helping with the nerves that are there, yeah. um, I do put a little bit of lidocaine without epi in that area. Okay. This procedure, ladies and gentlemen, does not it's very comfortable okay. despite how awful it sounds. It's, I, I bet everyone's like crossing their legs right now. Oh. Like, Oh my gosh, it happened. Um, it's very comfortable. All the women that have had this procedure barely even, they don't flinch. They don't even know that I'm in there with a needle. Uh, but just and for are you injecting, added, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you injecting no, like into the more like fattier tissue in the area or are you no, going just subdural? If you could explain that. So I'm not going to, I can't give it away completely. That's um, fine. It's actually protected by the O-Shot like trademark, oh, but fancy. I'm, essentially I'm, I'm putting the lidocaine inject it, injection into the hood of the clitoris, okay. almost where it meets the clitoris. And then mm -hmm. the injection itself goes right in. Wow. To the, yeah. Nobody feels it. Uh, you want to make sure you flood the area very well with at least one cc of platelet-rich plasma not activated um, by calcium chloride mm -hmm. you want it to essentially run down the because I, I don't know if you guys have back there an actual don't diet have right? a large <laughs> no so if, if you guys are interested ladies and gentlemen out there you can google what a clitoris actually looks like i know you think you know what it looks like but believe it or not it's a structure that almost uh resembles a penis um it's it's got a couple little wings i call them that are coming down from the structure so you essentially like want to down about two thirds of the vagina the top exactly of the very similar to, to the a, a male's anatomy but mm -hmm you want to flood that whole area with the platelet rich plasma and, and it does it sort of kind of streams down women don't really feel the injection at all if anything maybe a little bit of pressure mm -hmm. um and i i like to tell my patients that you're when you maybe void the first time or two you might feel like hmm, it's it doesn't feel like it's all coming out just like a little mm -hmm. bit of pressure there but that usually dissipates after like the first or second time that you go to the bathroom mm -hmm. um nobody complains of pain after maybe a little bit of tingling after the lidocaine starts to wear off uh you can go home and have sex right after there's zero complications um minimal, no minimal downtime, it sounds like no downtime 
I mean, if anything, maybe a drop of blood that goes away in, in two seconds because mm -hmm. the, you know, the tissue in that area regenerates very, very quickly. It's used mm -hmm. to taking a pounding every now and then. And, you know, it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty solid there. If there's a little cut, you know, it, it often repairs very, very quickly. Right. So I know that's yeah. a concern for most patients. That's awesome to know. And I think like we, one of our assessments that we do, um, especially if somebody is coming in and reporting that they have decreased sensation with arousal or even increased um, like pelvic pain is we actually check to see how the clitoral hood like moves and slides and glides. And that's yeah. something that not a lot of people understand that that clitoral hood needs to be able to retract and kind of contract over the clitoris. So I think that's mm -hmm. really amazing that, you know, we can look at clitoral pain or pain with arousal, like PGAD, persistent genital arousal disorders. We can look at it from two very different perspectives, physically seeing what does that hood do, but then also from a more of, I guess, like a metabolic kind of phase that you're looking at it from with the use of the PRP. So that's just mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of the discomfort for, well, not most women, but some women also comes from the fact that maybe they're not producing as much lubricant. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that hood could get stuck over mm -hmm. the clitoris a little bit. So I think lubrication is very important, which is something that PRP also helps with, mm -hmm. but maybe try some lubricant before, you know, automatically assuming that you're having some issues with your nerves. Um, mm -hmm. I, I often tell my patients to maybe play around with different things. PRP is not going to hurt. If anything, it's going to make things better, mm -hmm. but you know, lubrication is so important. And, and some women, I think just, they don't really take care of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we get older, we need a little bit more. Yeah. So, right. um, and there's so much more to that. I mean, that's like a whole nother conversation we could honestly have yeah. of like yeah. just lubricant, honestly. <laughs> and yeah you know, that of the body, but, you know, we, we tend to, to share with clients, you know, do skin rolling prior to being intimate to get skin rolling, meaning just kind of lift the skin of the labia and roll it to kind of get some kind of increase of blood flow there, awareness yeah. to their nerves. You can do it with a partner, without a partner. So mm -hmm. just so many amazing things that we really can do to help nourish this area. Oh, absolutely. And there's radio frequency devices that are frequently used too. Mm -hmm. I haven't really found the need to use them, but some practices um, that offer PRP injections use the radio frequency in conjunction with the PRP procedures. I feel like when you're using two things at once, it's hard to differentiate what's actually working. Uh, and then right. people assume that they have to do both procedures. And I feel like the PRP for women is enough sometimes with men and, and that's a completely different topic, but mm -hmm. a lot of times they need a little bit of stimulation from the radio frequency devices. But I think PRP for women, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Usually it's just one treatment. Sometimes, you know, a second treatment is optimal for certain patients, not more than two treatments. Um, if, if they want to keep up with it, maybe come back every couple of years you know, what as we ask what's the maintenance part yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, it's very subjective. So it depends on what you're, you're coming in, what your symptoms are. And, and I usually guide the patient based on that. I, I say anywhere from one month to three months for deciding if you want a second treatment, everyone's different when it comes to PRP. PRP alone usually takes about four to five weeks to even notice results anywhere on the body. If you're injecting it into a joint, if you're, if I'm putting it in your face for collagen stimulation for hair. So just like with anywhere else, I say, let's be patient. Let's give it about a month to three months, see where you're at. And then we can do a little bit more. Sometimes patients call in a week and they notice a result right away. So mm -hmm. it's all very subjective. Um, but, but really nobody hasn't benefited from a PRP injection. You, you gain something from it, whether it's a, a two or a 10, you know, mm -hmm. depending on how sensitive you are. Um, and then I'll just guide you from there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you had mentioned, you know, if people are having a little bit of like bladder leakage or difficulty with orgasms, um, what typically, what types of like sexual dysfunction or, or reasons to use this? What are people typically, you know, complaining their symptoms are um, that this can be helpful for? 
Yeah. So after pregnancy, you know, sometimes women experience a little bit of stress incontinence. I mean, menopause alone can start, you can start experiencing stress incontinence, even if you haven't had any children. So the stress incontinence alone, I think is huge. And and sometimes that's what brings people in alone. Mm -hmm. I don't usually treat just for stress incontinence. There's usually other factors that are coming into play as well, but an injection always goes into that area. So uh, like the distal part of the urethra, starts to become a little bit relaxed, you know, just kind of explaining it simply, uh, that tissue needs to tighten up a little bit better again. So what the platelet rich plasma is doing is it's, it's rebuilding, retightening that little bit of tissue that kind of helps hold that urine in. So when a woman coughs or sneezes, you know, they don't have to worry as much about a little bit of urine coming out, just sort of strengthens it. Mm -hmm. Um, the same thing is going for the vaginal tissue it strengthens the, the, there's a couple layers of, of tissue there. And depending on what layers are starting to break down a little bit, the PRP is, is sort of rebuilding the first three layers. So it's going to help tighten. It's going to make that area a lot stronger. It's going to help regenerate uh, the cervical mucus production a lot better. So women aren't experiencing that dryness that was causing pain when they were having sex and they thought it was their muscle, but it was actually just the fact that they needed the lubrication. Right. So a single shot of PRP, good amount, probably about, I would say four cc's total, mm. platelet-rich plasma is going, uh, but it sounds weird, but it's going between the, va- it's not going right into the vagina, but it's going sort of between the vagina and where the urethra is. And that flooding of that area, it's going to be, it's going to create almost like a a huge bleb. So if you put your, your fingers into the vagina and you sort of like palpated anteriorly, you Mm. would feel like a big, almost like a big bolus of just something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you activate it with some calcium chloride to sort of keep the PRP activated and in that area. And then that, that's going to help with the G-spot stimulation. It's going to help with the tissue regeneration of the vaginal area in that spot. And then it's also going to help right where you want it to regenerate the urethral tissue. It kind of reminds me, so this year for us was a very big year learning about prolapse and pessary care. Um, so we were talking about why people are still leaky after they've strengthened their muscles or they've supported their prolapse. And it comes back to exactly what you're saying Mm -hmm. is that that kind of urethral meatus or that little Mm -hmm. special tissue that's surrounding the urethra, that that needs to be plumped. So I think that this is a perfect, you know, compliment even for our, maybe some of our prolapse related. Absolutely. I think, I think it's off label to do it. If they're, what is it like a stage three, there's four Probably. stages for laps. I think mm-hmm. you can do it for a stage two for sure. And you can for a three, but you really shouldn't be doing it until they, they get some sort of surgical repair past mm-hmm. a three. It's that not going to hurt you, you know, right. but I, it's, it's not going to really, you're not going to really notice much of an much. effect from it because you're still dealing with a, like an anatomical issue. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's consistent with what we talk about too. Yeah. Well, even just, you know, the hormonal changes that we experience postpartum or perimenopausal or that sort of thing, you know, as the the vaginal mucosa like loses some of that elasticity and and thinning, you know, what we've also learned with that is it does become then more sensitive. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes, you know, not only is there a dryness associated where creating a little bit more like friction and almost Mm -hmm. injury to the tissue, um, it, it just becomes more aware and more sensitive to something even being there. So it sounds like that would even help with people who, you know, they're, they're okay. They've experienced with or experimented with different lubrication. They found a solution that's helpful for them as far as the lubrication is concerned, but they're still having either more or less of that sensitivity um, with sex or, yeah. or discomfort or feeling just wearing like sensation. clothes, like some people feeling just wearing their clothes mm-hmm. outside of vulvodynia and vaginismus. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, you know, a lot of times, and, and sometimes women don't talk about this either, but you can have pain and discomfort from not having sex. So you can have lichen sclerosis or you can have, God, some, some people actually have eczema or psoriasis in, in their labia. And a lot of women don't talk about it and they just feel like it's something they have to deal with and, and get through. 
and they're putting steroid creams on and maybe not getting the relief that they can get. But PRP works for that. Topically, awesome. little injections all around those areas. And, you know, it, 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 I wouldn't say it cures lichen sclerosis, but it absolutely makes the area oh, like 80 times better. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to one of the physicians. I, I had the opportunity to shadow um, an OBGYN in his office who he's incredible with sexual health and, and does a lot of PRP work. And he said he got a 100% cure, cure rate for a patient who was so just like completely whited out, you know, scar wow. tissue everywhere. And he, she came back for a second treatment. It was almost completely gone. He spot treated her a little bit more superficially. Whole thing was gone. Wow. All her pain, discomfort, completely gone. So you're using your body to just, you know, right. Many a times it's like tricortisone and estrogen and testosterone yeah. and all the different potions and creams that you all know. of that like sometimes and people experience right. some irritation from yeah. they'll get some burning or discomfort from using you know the different compound creams and right. formulations and that sort of thing yeah and then a little bit i'll shoot right into the labia regenerate a little bit of the uh, tissue there, make it look a little bit brighter and just perkier. Sometimes I'll, I'll mix the PRP with some, uh, I'm not gonna mention brand names, but a little right. bit of hyaluronic acid filler, dilute it and, and pump that into the labia and just give it a little bit more life and uh, make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. And you know, all happens within a matter of like 15 minutes. So yeah, it's, it's fun.